Okay, let's see how we can do this. All right, so uh, suppose the duration of a particular type of clinical trial, this is six, chapter six, normal distribution, is six problems. I'm probably going to read it, like one or two maybe, keep the video short. Suppose that the duration of a particular type of criminal is known to be normally distributed with a mean of 19 days and standard deviation of six days. Um, let X be the number of days for a randomly selected trial. Round all answers to four decimal places where possible. So really remember we're <clears throat> simulating a or using the distribution to try to determine the probability of something occurring. You gotta let go. The cat just jumped on me, sorry. Come on, let me finish this, sweetie. Okay, so what is the distribution of X? And meaning, what is the function that, uh, that draws this curve, this normal distribution on our coordinate plane? And it is a function, we call it N, and it's based on uh, the mean and the standard deviation. So in other words, the mu and the sigma. So in here we would type in 19 because that's the mean and the standard deviation is six days, okay? All right, so that's, that's just, it's in the slides. We talked about it during uh, class as well. If one of the trials is randomly chosen, find the probability that it, it lasted at least 18 days. So remember, we're not gonna choose a specific number of days because a specific number of days would just be a single number, okay? Uh, 19 days is the mean, so that's a poor representation. Sorry about that. Uh, let's change colors. 19 days would be, 18 days is, would be maybe there, depending on how wide our graph is. So um, we can't choose a single day, but they say here at least 18 days. So when we say at least 18 days, we're trying to find that probability of 18 or more, because at least means, is 27 at least 18 days? Yes. In fact, it's more than, but it's at least 18 days. So what's the probability? We would, you could use a TI, TI as I've said before, but this course we're building out in Excel. So we would type in a mean of uh, 19 here using our Excel spreadsheet. We're gonna type in a standard deviation of six. Uh, this box is true if we want the cumulative, cumul cumulative, I'm trying to get rid of that little apostrophe in there. An errant apostrophe. Uh, there we go. Um, so meaning that everything to the left of our curve up to that number. Well, that's not what this is. This question is asking for. It's asking for everything to the right of 18. So what we need to do is use the cumulative, but I want to use the complement. So I put the numbers in. The x is the 18, and so left of x is 0.4338 blah 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 wait at least yeah 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 and so this should be the the 5662 um, the complement it's that number because the 4338 is this left side so the rest of it is one minus this probability so we would have the pink stuff as the complement so I built that into the spreadsheet so that we would have the function itself, the actual distribution, the cumulative distribution, uh, up to that, from the left all the way up, up to that number that we type in here for x. And for this particular question, we wanted the right-hand side of 18, so we would take the complement, okay? If one of the trials is randomly chosen, find the probability that it lasted between 18 and 23 days. So what we're looking to do there is find the probability of it being eight between 18 and 23. So there's no great way to do that. So we're looking for the probability of X being selected between those two values, 18 and 23. So what we need to do is we need to figure out the total cumulative probability up to the 23. And then we're gonna subtract what I'll do in purple. Oh, I can't do it that way, you doofus. Um, do it this way. So we'll take the pink. So in other words, we're going to find the probability all of that, and then we're going to subtract from whatever to the left up to 18, and that'll give us the pink remaining portion between 18 and 23. So let's first type in 23. That's going to be this number. So that's the probability of selecting an X 
between this and up to and including the 23. And we're going to take that number and we're going to, uh, let's say, put it here. Oops. Let's undo that. I want to uh, edit paste special. Remember, we did that in class. So edit paste special. And I want to type in values. So there is 0.7475. So I took this number and I copied it down here. Now I want to change this 23 to 18. And now this 43, like we did before, is this probability between the uh, far as far left as possible up to 18. And I want to subtract that from this 0.74. So I'm going to type equals this number minus the number that's up in here and we get 0.313613. We round that correctly and we get 0.3137 or 31.37%. That's that number. Okay. Now we want to do a backwards problem. 79% of all types of trials are completed within how many days? Okay. So how many days would 79% would represent? We know that that 23 from the last question was 74. So up to 23 days, we would have 74.75 uh, or 74.8%. So we know that the answer to this question is somewhere up here. What value? I don't know. But we can use this. We can guess and check if we wanted to. We start putting... Uh, 24 and we get 79 that's pretty close so it must be less than 74 so we excuse me 24 so we could put 23.8 and we could do it that way but that's just oh my goodness why would i do it that way when i have software that will actually do this thing for me okay so i'm going to type in the mean here 19 i'm going to type in the standard deviation of six um, i'm going to type in the probability that i'm looking for that's 0.79, and it's going to tell me uh, how many days that 79% represents. So not even 24, it would be 23.83, blah, 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 which, of course, we were getting to if we were going to guess and check. But it would, it would take a while to get all those decimal places. I'm not saying that we need all those decimal places. So they want this. Please enter a whole number. This is going to be rounded to, of course, 24. Okay, let's do a second problem. You'll note that this problem is very similar to the one we just did, just different context. The average American male consumes 9.7 grams of sodium each day. Suppose that the sodium consumption of American men is normally distributed with a standard deviation of 0.9 grams. Okay, so they've given us the average man consumes 9.7 grams. So that's going to be our mean, 9.7. And then uh, the standard deviation for these average males is 0.9 grams. And uh, suppose an American male is randomly chosen. Let X equal the amount of sodium consumed by this average male. Um, uh, American man randomly chosen. Round all numeric answers to four decimal places. What is the distribution based on? Well, it's based on the mean, 9.7, and the standard deviation. Those are the only two numbers we need to draw this curve. And then from there, we can have all these uh, probabilities that we can do. And so that's why this function, the one that's in this box, only needs these two numbers. Okay. The reason why it's showing one now is because 23.8 is way to heck over here to the right. So it's so far to the right, it would encapsulate 100% of the data points for this new 9.7 and 0.9. Okay. Uh, so find the probability that this American male consumes between 9.2 and 10.7. So 9.2 and 10.7. Let me adjust my normal curve here with the numbers that make more sense for what we just are doing here. Uh, let's put in a, an average or mean of 9.7. And a standard deviation, remember, standard deviation of 0.9 means that 0.9 to the right and so 9.7 plus 0.9 is 10.6. And another 0.9 would be 11.5. And another 0.9 would be 12.4. If I subtracted 0.9 for each of these steps going down to the left, I would have 
subtract another 0.9 and I get 7.9 and subtract another 0.9 I get 7.0 this is one standard deviation this is zero standard deviations this is minus one standard deviation this is plus two standard deviations this is plus three standard deviations from the mean this is minus two standard deviations this is minus three standard deviations from the mean this being the mean, so if I add that 0.9, I'm going up one standard deviation. All right. Now, uh, they want to know what is the probability that if we randomly select out a male, that they, that person would consume between 9.2 and 10.7 grams of sodium. So 9.2 and 10.7. 9.2 is somewhere over here. 10.7 is somewhere up in here. So we're asking, what is the probability of me selecting a male that actually consumes salt or sodium in that range, in that interval? So we need to do that trick where I had to subtract and add, uh, subtract and whatnot. So we're first going to find out what the probability is to find a to draw a male that consumes 10.7 or less. Okay. So the I guess maybe I'd make it a different color. Oops. So when I say the dark purple region, you know it's from 10.7 and to the left. So I'm going to type in 10.7 in for x. And now I get a probability of 80, 86.7%. Okay, And now I'm going to take that number, control C if you're on a Windows box, command C if you're on a Mac. I'm going to hit, oop, I don't want to paste it yet until I go into the cell that I want to paste it into. And you can choose any cell, it doesn't matter. We're just using it as sort of scratch paper or a scrap paper if you wish. I always said scrap when I was a kid and then teachers say scratch, so I don't know. Okay, so 0.86, I copied it down there. Now we want to find the probability from as far left as possible over to this first pink, or in other words, we want to find the probability of the blue portion, which is from here over to there. Oops, that got messed up. Or in other words, this stuff. And I want to subtract the blue from the purple to leave the pink. So the blue is uh, this number, 9.2. So we're going to change this 10.7 to 9.2. And we're going to get this 2.8925 blah, blah, blah. Now, since I set it up previously, this cell is already taking this number and subtracting that. How do I do that? I can, I can double click that to highlight. It's D44 minus B29. So it's already doing the math for me. This one minus that one is equal to 0.5775. Oops. And they did not round correctly. Oh my goodness. Because that 8 would round it up to 4. So uh, what my question would be is if I put in the correct rounded value, oops, will it mark it wrong? I still can't type the correct answer in there. And so we'll submit, and it's okay with it. So whoever wrote this question did a nice job of giving some leeway there for rounding. And uh, like if we didn't keep all of these numbers, that would probably be less. And that's why that other number was an answer, was submitted as the strict answer. Okay, now the middle 10% of American men consume between what weights of what two weights of sodium? So the middle 10%. Okay, so this is a little trickier. This is a little trickier. I'm gonna see if I can leave those standard deviation lines in there and get rid of all this pink. We want the middle 10%. So we want the band in here, band or the interval, that represents the middle 10%. I'm going to erase all these numbers down here so I can write some other stuff. The middle 10%. I'm hoping that that means that we understand that this little portion here is 5% and this little portion here is 5%. And we talk about that, if we're talking about the middle 10%, which we are, then we want it to be equidistant on either side of the mean. So we want a number here, we don't know, and a number here, we don't know that represents the middle 10%. So how do I figure that out? Well, I don't know what the value itself is, but I know that if the mean is 50%, okay, 
and we're going to the left 5%, then this number, whatever this number is, occurs at 45%. Meaning that the probability of selecting someone who has less that, uh, I don't know the number, getting a probability of selecting someone to the left of that line, if that would be 45%, then that line will be at a particular va particular value, and we can use the inverse normal to find out what that is. Okay, and what would that be? I'm going to lead. The, I'm going to type in 9.7 here. Type in the 0.9 standard deviation there, and in this I'm going to type in 0.45, and so I get 9.58. So the value here is 9.58. That's my left boundary. Or if you're writing it in interval notation, it would be like that. And let's put the 6, 9 in there because they did say four decimal places. Now, if I want to capture this value directly, instead of 0.45, I could type in 0.55. Because remember, I'm going 5% to the right in order to represent the middle 10%. And now I get 9.8131. 9.8131. Nine rounded. And so that's the interval we're looking for. The low value or the lower boundary of this interval is 9.5869, and our upper bound is 9.8131. And that's it. All right, I hope that's enough.